Let's look at the determinants of financial estimates in education. In every sector, there are certain factors that determine the financial estimates. So education is not uh, exclusive. It's the same thing. Now let's look at what comes up. First is the educational objectives. Though cannot be quanti quantitatively measured, it is a major factor in estimating the financial expenditure in education. It guides the planner to identify the priority area during appropriation. If you don't have the educational objective, you will not know what you need to look out for when you are planning for a particular year. Secondly, we have to look at the country's income measured by the gross national product and the gross domestic product. The macro financial analysis, which the main focus is the relationship between investment in education and the GDP and the expenditure on the sector of the country. The trend in the ratio of GDP and public expenditure in relation to the investment in education are used for forecasting the supply of resources for the educational sectors. This is what Bandit referred to in 1980. When the GDP is growing, there is a tendency that the financial allocation to education will also increase. But if the GDP is not growing, it means the, you might not be able to get, get, get in more money into education, which we call it applied to other sectors anyway. But the GDP determines as expected income to sector, including education. Now, let's look at student enrollment. The total expenditure on the system depends largely upon the student and population. When preparing the school budget, the number of students, the number of classes, and the, no, the number of armed per grade must be considered. This is because, to a large extent, the expected income of the school depends on the school enrollment. So when you are dealing with school enrollment, you, it is, goes a long way to determine what needs to be. Now we have to also look at the teacher and the non-teachers, the staff that are required in the school. They are determinants of what money you need and how much you need. Now the total number of teacher, of teaching and non-teaching staff, together with their salaries and allowances, determine to a large extent the financial estimation of the educational sector. Now staff qualification experience are also factors because when you're looking at the staffing, remember they are not all going to come in with the same level of education. So with that, it means there will be variation in what they will pay. And again, they are not going to come in with the same years of experience. So there will be variation. So these are factors that need to be considered where you are forecasting for school, for the school system. The higher the number of staff, the higher will be the tendency to increase expenditure. And the same goes with the experience of uh, the qualification required. Now let's look at the curriculum. The school curriculum is an educational system to a large extent determine the financial estimation of the system. The science and technology oriented curricula is more cost intensive and as such will cost higher than the humanities based for expenditure on the laboratories and workshop, as the, uh, equipment to deliver and so on. So in this case, you describe the kind of curriculum you're going to run will determine the amount that will be required to actually put that curriculum into practice. Lastly, let's look at the inflation. Sometimes you discover that inflation could be a factor to what is being uh, projected. Now, the inflatory trend in the country will also influence the financial estimates in country. When the inflation index is high, there is bound to be an increase in prices of goods. The educational facilities may not be spread. Not only this, the employee may also agitate for increase to their wages to cope with inflationary trend. So you discover you're going to battle with so today. You might have employee agitating for increase, like what just happened now with the ASU strike, uh, agitating, oh, we want this, we want that, and the rest of them. So most times you discover when this agitation comes up, it affects the projection method. So when you want to project, don't project the exact. You must add some percentage for the eventualities, what will come up in the future. So inflation might be there. If inflation comes up and catch up with what we are projecting, so what will happen? So the percentage allowance you would have given will help you to take care of that. If not, you will run into having inconclusive, uh, inconclusive pro project that you are not able to deliver.